challenge of making personal projects is the motivation. Um, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough inspiration. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough resources. There are many, many reasons why a project cannot happen. But in the end, the flip side of the, uh, the challenge is the rewards. When actually the project happens, go through the pain and challenge of making a project happen, there is an incredible reward, which is the growth of uh, my personal life. And I learn something about myself in the end, and I learn something new, and I learn something about interacting and, and meeting new people, and there is a sense of growth, which is incredibly rewarding, which is beyond money, beyond ego. Wonderful things about personal project is the first 100% is up to me, which means that 100% of the creative process is entirely up to me. There is no agenda, there is no politics, there is no bureaucracy, there, there are no chefs in the kitchen. I can control uh, the destiny and the process of my projects. And it's always fun because I dictate what I want to do. And it gives a purpose in life. I feel like when everything falls apart in my workplace, I can always fall back, fall back to what I'm doing with my personal project, and it's, uh, it always goes on. And in the end, it gives me a sense of personal growth, um, a sense of learning, sense of discovery, a sense of that I'm actually uh, a better person in the end of the, uh, the, 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 the project that I've started. I would like to share a quick story about uh, one of my projects that I worked on when I was uh, in a big advertising agency. Um, a few years ago, the client was Cheerios, General Mills, and uh, the brief was Cheerios comes in five different flavors. Most of the people think Cheerios comes in the one yellow box, but actually it comes in four other flavors. It's to communicate to the consumers that Cheerios comes in five flavors. So my partner and I, we sat down, we brainstormed, and we came up with this brilliant idea. <laughs> Only their holes taste the same. Very simple. We presented this idea to the client. They loved it. Everybody started laughing, and this is so incredible and simple and clever and so on. We were all having great time. So, wow, this is much easier than I thought. <laughs> and in the end, a client raised her and said, wait a minute, I think we should be talking about flavor instead of taste, because that's the corporate language we talk about when we talk about our products. OK. And then discussion went on, taste versus flavor. And this went on for over 40 minutes. In the end, we were all pissed off and tired and frustrated, and the idea ended up dying. And uh, it never really happened. So what started as a really great, fun, simple, clever idea it ended up muddled in these corporate dialogues and egos and so on that never ever happened. So after four years of this uh, process, I got really frustrated and tired. I wasn't able to produce anything. I really wanted to do something. I really wanted to not only think about our idea, but actually make something happen. So the conclusion that I arrived after four years of trying, of trying to come up with an idea that I thought it was really engaging the consumer and beneficial to the brand, but in the end, nothing happened. So the conclusion that I arrived was that I cannot depend on others to make things happen. And the solution is, I'll just have to do it myself. That includes creating, planning, financing, producing, and marketing the idea. Uh, I realized that most of the ideas that were being produced in the agencies were formulaic and boring and predictable. And these ideas soon filled the spaces around uh, my surrounding, like in uh, wall postings and billboards and everywhere, bus stops and subway stops. I wanted to do something to change this ad that reminded me of this dull process that as a creative I felt frustrated and as a consumer I felt violated. So I spent a few thousand dollars of my own pocket, and I produced 30,000 stickers in the shape of speech bubbles, and I started to place these speech bubbles on top of ads such as this. <laughs> and these. And uh, I didn't know what to expect. I knew that someone would eventually write something in the speech bubbles. The only rule that I would not write anything myself, so I would just wait until people write something. And I realized there were wonderful uh, <laughs> stuff that people wrote annual rights, and someone else wrote, Mike Tyson beat my ear off. <laughs> I steal music, and I'm not going away. <laughs> I Bush, dumb and dumber. <laughs> what country was Jesus bomb? 
So sometimes it was political, sometimes it was just silly like this. India, they are sacred, but this ain't India, bitch. <laughs> I used to smoke crack on the sixth train. And sometimes you just spoke, spoke the simple truth. I use it to download porn. <laughs> it's so simple and so truthful, but in the context of IBM, it became really funny. I lost my other hump to cancer. <laughs> <laughs> and I noticed that a lot of other people started to produce their own bubbles with their own messages, political, weird, advertising up to promote their books and so on. And I saw even this one, Yipikaye MO. I didn't know what it was. It was all over the place. And I realized this was a marketing campaign for uh, Die Hard 4. So advertising agency is uh, taking the bubble project as their guerrilla tool to promote their product, which is kind of interesting to the whole circle. Uh, when I collected about uh, 1,000 pictures, I uh, placed these uh, uh, photographs in the website, thebubbleproject.com. And also I made it open so that people can download the template and print it and cut it and place and bubble their own town. In the beginning, there was about you know, 60 to 90 visitors every day, friends and friends of friends. I thought when there were like 120, I was like, yes, there's 120 people coming to the website and, and looking at these bubbles and sharing ideas together. One day, I went to see, just for curiosity, how many people had visited the website. The number jumped from 100 and something to 50,000 something. And I thought, this must be some kind of a mistake in the server or something. And then the next time I went there, the website wasn't even there. It had crashed the website. And uh, I was really puzzled until I found out it all happened because of this little blog in boingboing.net that mentioned about Bubble Project. And it really completely changed the course of the Bubble Project since then because other blogs wrote about the Bubble Project. There are magazines, interviews, and so on. So what personal project taught me is that personal and professional projects complement each other. So after the bubble project, I got a lot of uh, professional opportunities, agencies asking me to do freelance and creating something similar to bubble project that would become viral and, and would, become, would capture imaginations of people around the world. So and things that I learned from my professional world, like mass scaling and, and marketing, I can also apply to my personal projects. So these two worlds can complement each other. The second is that creating platform is powerful. So instead of creating a project for myself and just showing up, uh, creating projects for other people to participate and collaborate, uh, instantly gain sense of scale and sense of depth and sense of reach. And also you get to meet a lot of cool people and exchange ideas in the process. Time is a concept which can be stretched. I hear all the time, oh, but you know, how can you do this project? I don't have time. You know, I'm, I'm so busy at work. Time is just an idea, and, uh, and as an idea, it can be changed. And I really believe that an hour can be stretched to become three hours. So if you're really having fun, and if you really want to do something, there is always uh, time to make these things happen. And finally, sharing is rewarding. When I went to school in the 90s, my teachers used to teach me when you have a great idea, you have to protect it. You have to copyright it, don't show it to anybody, just keep it to yourself and make it happen later on and then you make a lot of money with it. And I think the whole creative uh, 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 philosophy has changed because of the internet. There is uh, the whole idea of the open source and creative commons. People are creating projects and programs for free just for the joy of creating something and sharing. And when that happens, wonderful things happen. When uh, people are giving something, there's always something that comes back in a much bigger scale. So I would like to thank you very much for sharing your time with me. And uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.